Welcome to Open BX Rx Tuesday on BronxNet. I'm your host, Kim Nalene, and I'd like to invite you to get social with us at BronxNet TV on Instagram and Twitter and BronxNet Community Television on Facebook. From August 1st to August 7th, healthcare professionals will be honoring Worldwide Breastfeeding Week. Joining me to discuss the importance of breastfeeding is Associate Clinical Director of Maternal Child Health at the Montefiore Wakefield Campus, Melissa A. Pius. Melissa, thank you so much for joining me. Good morning. So can you tell me a little bit about Worldwide Breastfeeding Week? Sure. Worldwide Breastfeeding Week gives us a opportunity to explain the importance of breastfeeding and why it's so beneficial to infants around the world. So this is actually my first time ever hearing about this week, so I'm curious to know more. Um, but first, I want to know why is Montefiore honoring it? We're honoring World Breastfeeding Week because we understand the importance of breastfeeding to the community and for every infant around the world. Now, how can breastfeeding be beneficial to a baby? Sure. Breastfeeding provides passive immunity from mother to child. So it helps babies to fight infections and disease. And for mothers, it could actually reduce the um, risk of uterine cancer and breast cancer. Okay, that's super interesting. I actually never really heard of that. I know a lot of people often um, recommend mothers to do breastfeeding. Would you say that's the reason why like a lot of doctors would recommend mothers to choose breastfeeding over formula? They would also recommend it because it helps mother and infant to bond. It also, like I said, prevents infections and disease. Actually, breastfeeding can reduce the risk of ear infections in children. Oh, and do you happen to know why that is? Sure. Um, it helps with the swallowing and the way the baby's positioned rather than with bottle feeding. The position helps from the milk going right down to the throat and preventing ear infections. Wow, that's really interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Now, our country recently experienced a baby formula shortage. Can you just tell us about that a little bit um, before we go deeper into that? Just talk about the formula shortage. Sure. The formula shortage caused lots of fears throughout the country. As you know, in many supermarkets, there weren't formula on the shelves. This further pressed the issue of breastfeeding and why it's so important. And it made my team and I focus more on helping that mother breastfeed from the time of birth. Now, I'm curious to know what about moms who may not be able to choose breastfeeding? Is there an alternative for that? Of course, there are alternatives. There are milk donation programs, which Amantafir is a part of. Um, women who have the ability to breastfeed, they can donate their breast milk and it is donated. Oh, wow. Can you actually tell me a little bit more about um, milk donations? I've never heard of that before, but I think it's a wonderful opportunity for moms who can't, um, you know, or maybe people who have adopted babies who can't breastfeed. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Sure. Lots of um, patients who have a difficulty in breastfeeding have chosen this option. The safest way is going through a hospital or an organization that works with companies that do a process where they do thorough background checks on the patients and they ensure that the milk is safe for use. Wow. Now, has breastfeeding ever been met with any opposition in the past or is there a negative stigma attached to breastfeeding? Sure. Um, I think that it's met with opposition because some people find it to be a lot of work. You have to know how to properly latch the infant, Patients also often have fears with how long should they be feeding or the feeds long enough. Patients that come from foreign countries also see the Western world as a modern world and they think formula is the best option. But we all know that breast milk, if a patient is able to breastfeed, is the best option. Now here in the Bronx, we tend to have the lowest breastfeeding rate in NYC. Why aren't mothers in the Bronx breastfeeding? I think this is this could be multifactorial. It could be due to the fact that some patients lack health insurance, lack proper prenatal care. There could also be the inability to be able to meet with a lactation consultant so that they have that support early on. And can you tell me a little bit, because you talked about prenatal care and just care in general, I think a lot of people 
assume once you have the baby, that's it, you're on your own. Um, but I'm sure there's a, a lot that goes into helping the mom after they have that baby. And, I, and I'm sure breastfeeding is probably one of the things that a lot of healthcare professionals go over. Can you just tell me a little bit more about that? Absolutely. At Mont Montefiore Wakefield, we are a baby friendly facility. We think it's important to begin breastfeeding soon after the time of birth. So we'll do skin to skin time and place the baby right onto mom's chest, allowing mom to be able to breastfeed. Our nurses, our lactation consultants and physicians provide support that our patients may need, not only while they're in the hospital, but outside of the hospital as well. We offer a breastfeeding clinic on Tuesday afternoons at the Wakefield campus. And we have a hotline that you could reach out to the unit. If you should have any questions, you can always call the unit at any time of the night and any one of our staff will support you. Now, I wanna go back to talking about the Bronx a little bit. I know here in the Bronx, we have so many different just cultural backgrounds and ethnicities. And I'm wondering, could that contribute or be a contributing factor to the lack of breastfeeding that we're seeing here? Absolutely. Like I said, um, the Western world is seen as a more modern world and people who come from foreign countries may often think formula is the option. The other thing could be that some cultures are a little more modest and they're frightened to maybe breastfeed in public. I'm really glad that you brought that up because I know even since like maybe I was in college, I just know that it's been unfortunately like a political thing about breastfeeding in public or, you know, just women breastfeeding in general. Can you just talk a little bit to more how, how it's more just safe for the baby and it's not, I don't think it should be something that's looked at as controversial. Can you talk a little bit more about that? I think that breastfeeding shouldn't be seen as um, something that's out of the norm. It should be our norm. We should be able to breastfeed in public if necessary with a cover so that we don't maybe don't feel uncomfortable around other people. Public buildings now offer um, facilities where people can enter and breastfeed with a little more modesty if that's of concern to them. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now, the Bronx continues to rank last in health outcomes. We're normally 62 out of all the 62 counties that we have here. Does the lack of breastfeeding contribute to maybe some of the poor, uh, the poor health outcomes that we're seeing in the Bronx? I can't say that the two exactly coincide with one another, but giving our child breast milk gives them a good start from the beginning. Now, Montefiore previously had an event yesterday, but can you tell us about the upcoming event on August 5th? Sure. On August 5th, we're going to have a popcorn table at the center circle of the hospital where we're going to provide information about breastfeeding, in particular, some information on women who choose to breastfeed and are returning back to the workforce. We're going to provide information on the benefits of breastfeeding, and we can answer any questions that anyone may have in regards to breastfeeding. Now, I want to know what are some steps new moms can take to have a successful breastfeeding session? I think it's important to set yourself up in an environment that's comfortable, that's quiet, that's a peace, where you can sit down and focus on the time with your baby. And are there any breastfeeding myths out there that you would like to dispel right now? Sure. Um, I think that it's people tend to think that it's a lot of work and that it's difficult, but I try to sell it as this is something that is easy. You carry it with you. You don't need to warm it up and you can breastfeed at any time without any restrictions. And what's something that the mom should do to stay healthy so that the baby does have, you know, uh, you know, just healthy breast milk to consume? Proper nutrition is very important, especially if you're going to breastfeed. In order to be able to breastfeed and have a good supply, you have to have a nutritious meal, plenty of vegetables, fruits, and stay very well hydrated. That's one of the most important things. So you talked about, you know, baby friendly hospitals. Can you just let us know how can mothers find out if a hospital is baby friendly? Sure. You can always go on to your hospital's website if they should have a website, which Montefiore does. Um, in addition to that, there is a Baby Friendly USA website, and it will give you a listing of baby friendly hospitals. Amazing. And can you just let everybody know how they can stay up to date with Montefiore? Sure. You can log on to our Montefiore website, uh, www.montefiore.org, and you can find the latest information on Baby Friendly and all the wonderful things we offer. 
in regards to breastfeeding support. All right, and I do have one more question before I let you go. Can you just let everybody know just the importance of breastfeeding overall? If anybody's still having any doubts, what's some advice that you would give to a new mom who's still on the fence about it? I say to any mom, all you need is the desire to want to try. Give it a shot. Um, it's easy. I was able to do it successfully with not one, but two children and working full time. If I can do it, anyone can. And then I love that you brought up the fact that um, about work, because a lot of moms are going back to work, right? We're not working from home as we used to. Can you talk a little bit just about the challenges of maybe that transition and what they can do to help with that? Absolutely. That transition can be difficult from being at home with your baby to then entering the workforce. It's important to take time to make sure you're well hydrated, that you're eating well, and that you're taking the time to take care of yourself as a mother. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you won't be able to provide the care and breastfeed that baby as successfully as you should hope. Take the time in between your work. Make sure you're, you know your breastfeeding um, policies at your job. Make sure that your job gives you the opportunity to stop and have a place to be able to pump and to stay well hydrated. All right, Melissa, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. We'll be right back with more Open BXR Tuesday.